And uh, one of my favorite books as a kid uh, was Fahrenheit 451. And this is Ray Bradbury's classic book uh, from the 1950s. And, you know, I don't think it's possible to spoiler a book that's that old. You know, if you <laughs> I think it's okay. I think it's okay now. <laughs> I think you, you've been talking recently about The Matrix a lot on your show. And you're like, yeah. I, I, I don't even have to say spoiler alert because you haven't seen it in 20 years. You're, you're, it's not going to be a spoiler for you. But, uh, but that book, Fire Night 451, is a dystopian novel that uh, Ray wrote uh, in the context of the McCarthy era book burnings that were going on. And I wonder if you see that coming from these little black mirrors that we all have, uh, does that now kind of manifest itself in, in a completely different way, decentralized, uh, you know, to spread out and, and how a society interacts with it to effectively not burn, but cancel this book, like don't cancel yeah. this book? Uh, that's a great question, and there's so much there. And I'm a big sci-fi guy, too, and so much of the way I view the world is because I don't want us to end in a dystopian future. I don't want the machines to take over from Terminator. I don't want to have to end up living on Mars like Total Recall or being the battery like in The Matrix. Or, it, or, or you know, one of the beautiful things about Fahrenheit 451 is that many of the people that were doing the burning were secretly having thoughts that were for free thoughts. That's right. Right. And in many ways, that caused them to do more burning because they had to hide their, you know, I mean, this is there's a very religious sort yeah. of repress yourself and then destroy the other sort of notion in that. Um, I would say I'm I'm very, you know, it's funny, I, I describe myself as a world weary optimist. 